Have you ever fought someone? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever fought someone? No. Have I been punched in the face by a girl? Yes. Really? Yeah, I didn't even know her. What hurt your soul more, that or just your DMs? DMs. So ladies and gentlemen, so excited today <laughs> to talk to you who I believe to be the queen of Bachelor Nation and wow. beyond, um, you know, dancing Mirabal champion, Caitlin Bristow. That one never gets old. Never. No. The only problem is you won when it was the pandemic. How much does that suck? I know, I was just there on Tuesday night to watch Charity and I felt the energy of the crowd in there and I said, you know what? I gotta do this again sometime. I think you deserve a redo. Uh, there needs to be a season of champions. How would you line up against like a Charlie D'Amelio? Because well, I'd there's... clearly not win. You can't win again. It's a voting show, and she has like 130 million followers, so you can't win against that. They need to change that because Harry from Netflix is still in the competition. And... He's a great dancer, though. Is he? No. <laughs> I was like, what, did I miss something? <laughs> no, it's so bad. I know she's just like twirling around. Riley him. is incredible, and Harry seems like the sweetest little honey ever, but he just like. I mean, he can't dance. Yeah. And she's really good at tricks and flips. And, and you know, I do want to see him stick around for a bit because I love when people improve. But I want him to do a little more. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I mean, it's good. It's it's good. It's a good merit to have non-dancers perform. But then you have the Demilios, who are like kind of semi-professional. Yeah. You're still. I mean, you have some dance. You a lot of dance experience. Yeah. I uh, which guess is, which so. is good. That's good. You use what you have. Yeah. I. But I'd never been in a ballroom before. Oh, ballroom of dancing is like the hardest kind of dance there is. We, we took um, dance lessons from a guy that was in the Dancing with the Stars touring folks. Oh, cool. And for the for our wedding. And, oh, uh, wait, your dance looked incredible. Oh, thank you. you oh, saw it that? was so good. Oh, yeah, a saw. champion <laughs> is telling me I looked good. You did. Well, at, at that point, your your goal is to not fall or step on my wife's dress, you know. Or and you all didn't. Those. Did not do that. Didn't slip on a lift, you know, no, no catastrophes. You, you know, in the New York, you know, everything that led to the You had Goodman the frame and taught, everything. Yeah, right, frame oh, yeah. is important. I walked around the house just like talking to myself with the frame. Yeah, you didn't look stupid at all. Well, <laughs> it's tough. I, I mean, get it. I did that it's, too. Um, you, you know, in life, you, you try to build emotional connections, but then you have this physical conversation with your brain yeah. that you're learning. So, what, what was the biggest takeaway from Dancing with the Stars? Um, that I need to stop judging my body for what it looks like because it's capable of literally anything. I went through so many injuries and put my body to the test and I don't know, I just felt like, I was like, I can do anything after Dancing with, Dancing with Stars to me was harder than The Bachelorette. It's, it, that's, that's interesting, first of all, because The it's Bachelorette really is hard. <laughs> I know. Uh, but is it, is it harder because it's a physical, like a quantifiable thing that you're doing versus That word was emotional? way too big for me. Quantifiable. Well, you're like, you're either going to get a 10 or you're not. You're yeah. either going to land the thing or you're going to stumble or you're not. Whereas right. Bachelorette, you're kind of like... Always uh, stumbling? Uh, yeah, but you're also like, there's no editing of your dance. Your dance is what your dance That's is. That's true. On Bachelorette, you know, maybe you have a rough day. That's true. Uh, well, Bachelorette to me was... I mean, it was all the things dancing was. It was physically exhausting, mentally, like emotionally, everything. But dancing, for some reason... Um, I put way more pressure on myself. Interesting. I think it's because I grew up wanting to be a dancer and this felt like, you know, like I, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to use a hockey reference. I picture somebody that like fought their whole life to get into the NHL and they were this close, but then they just weren't good enough. Mm -hmm. And then at the age of 36, they got to do it again get a chance, play in the NHL, and win the Stanley Cup. So it's some it's some form of, like, redemption. So it was really, like, important to me, and I, it was almost to prove to myself that I was good enough and that I could do it, and it was a childhood dream, and I had so much pressure on myself. Um, whereas Bachelorette, I was like, how does this TV thing work? I'm just going to make out with a bunch of guys? Like, I didn't put pressure on myself until the end. Right. I feel like Bachelorette's more a survival based on cultural and societal, you know, just ways that you've already grown up. Like yeah. you, you're great with your humor. And that's why I was so excited when you were like, Hey, I might be boring. I was like, give me boring <laughs> Caitlin. I guess I'll not, I, like, you don't need to do anything. That's true. I'm just trying to be boring in a sense where I'm not making headlines about ex-boyfriends. Cause I'm like, enough. Because I could say anything, I could say anything, but the one thing about my relationship status will get picked up. So I'm trying to bite my tongue, otherwise I will be wanted for murder. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that'll that'll make headlines too. <laughs> um, but no, because I'm the type where 
I will go above and beyond to sort of like give someone whatever I think they want from me, mm -hmm. whether it be in a podcast or on stage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what I have, what I have written in my office is this little sign that just says, make the audience come to me. Hmm. And it's just a reminder I have to have that like, I am enough. I don't need to shout through the things or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I am enough. And I, I'm, one of my mantras is I am enough. I have enough. I want to share it. But, oh, I love that. But don't you feel like sometimes it's never enough for everybody else? And it's that conversation between what's enough for me versus for everyone else. Yeah. And I'm sometimes getting a little bit lost in that thought, which I need to stop doing. Because I go through phases where if I'm like in a darker place and going through a harder time, the noise and the hate affects me so much more than if I'm in a good place. But that makes so much sense because these trolls and the noise, it's because they're in a dark place. So misery loves company. I go looking for it. I feel it more because it's almost validating all my insecurities and they're the insecure ones trying to attack me. You know, it's just a nasty little circle. It, it's nasty. I look at it like a cold, right? Like if you get hit with a cold, but you're sleeping a lot and your your immune system is good, right. you might not even know that that thing hit you. You might just be fine. Right. But if you get hit with a cold when you're battered down and mm -hmm. all these other issues, your body's just not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And yet, like you said, we go searching for that pain. I I feel like in some ways, because I, I have this chance to like almost overanalyze folks like you mm -hmm. because you're one of two or three people that if I make a story about on 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 the podcast or whatever, people want to know that they care about you. Mm. But I have the same exact trait where if there's a thousand people in a room and three people are talking shit about me, I will spend the whole day mm -hmm. trying to find out what their issue is with me and how we can fix it. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? I don't have an answer. <laughs> I had a therapist on my podcast today and I ask similar questions like why do we why is it so hard to be vulnerable and it's so easy to just be angry why is that and you know i think at the end of the day it's it's rejection mm. for that one scared like you don't want to feel if i sat i, I actually said this to her i when i was dating somebody sorry um, i think it's this this is i couldn't do what you do yeah, because I don't know I'm, this area. I'm like i need to focus um <laughs> but that makes that makes the conversation easy because i'm just like looking ahead you know <laughs> i don't get stuck in your eyes when i ask a, a, i can ask a tough I question like you like, oh let's make a left so every x tell me about them <laughs> <That's> <laughs> passing on the left <laughs> but i was saying i i was in this relationship once and i am so stubborn i'm so stubborn mm -hmm. and this was probably I don't know, seven years ago. And I was, we were in a fight about something and I knew it was my fault. And that to me killed me because I was like, okay, Caitlin, this is your chance. Break the cycle, apologize. Go put on your like song, crank it up, go sit in his lap, give him a hug and say you're sorry. And I had to like pump myself up for that. <laughs> like I was like putting on like Beyonce and like slapping myself in the face being like, go on Caitlin. Like I, it to was admit. so hard to just say that I was sorry. Interesting. But I'll tell you what, when I did it, I got rejected. He did oh. not take it. He did not want me to touch him. He didn't want mm. me to, and the, the apologize didn't work. And then I went, well, screw that. Oh, that's tough. And that's what, but, but again, What's that, the worst that happened? He was like not feeling it, but that made him look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I tried. I knew I was in the wrong. I apologize. It wasn't something so crazy that he was like, I'm going to need three to five business days for it. It wasn't something bad. It was dumb. And I was like, well, you know what? I tried. That's on you. <laughs> Isn't it like, look, I know it takes me 50, 50 minutes to make lasagna. You just know how to bake it. You know the temperature, but people, you never know the temperature. I never knew, knew with my wife how long it would take for her to resolve something. Mm -hmm. So I would almost pressure for a resolution, which would make it 10 times as long uh -huh. versus going to walk the dog for half an hour and do the dishes. Yeah. And it's just that dance that you have to learn about what the other person needs I know and it sounds like you came in and that's too bad that you didn't get the re response because you know you do recalibrate based on what works and what doesn't and and, if, and when you're in a vulnerable moment and maybe this is why it's tough when you deal with audience that doesn't maybe like what you're doing or something yeah when you're in a vulnerable moment you're like exposing yourself and then when you're not given the the you know, carrot at the end of the stick. You're like, well, yeah. fuck me then. It's so hard to expose yourself and, and do that and then not, like, it almost validated why I shouldn't apologize and stay stubborn. Because it was like, well, that didn't work. Yeah. Now, I, I've, I've clocked what you're wearing here and I had to write this down. A tiger never loses sleep over the opinion of sheep. <laughs> Beautiful line. But then you did say, 
and yet you spent the last few days doing that. <laughs> I was like, except for that one time that this tiger. Yeah, uh, like, I I'm, get it. I fuck with sheep all the time. I fuck with sheep all the time. <laughs> High five on fucking with sheep. I Backwards. Okay. I honestly, <laughs> it's so bad because, again, I will, I know exactly where it's stemming from. I know this person is unhappy. I know I'm triggering something in them and that it's not even their fault and that society has put pressure on them, that this is not about me, that this is about them. Like, I know all these things. And yet I'm like, everybody hates me. And I'm, you know, I don't want to talk too much about relationship stuff, but in this picture that people have painted, he is victim, I am villain. There always needs to be a victim and a villain to a story, and I happen to be the villain. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that I'm hurting too, because I'm, I really push people's buttons um, on the internet, and I, I rebel. I'm a, I'm a rebellious person, and I don't do things the way that other people think I should but I'm doing things the way I know I should. But you're not pushing their buttons by yelling at them. You're just right. living your life. Exactly. And it, I think it just goes to show that, and I, rem I have to, this happens to me once a month where I suck myself back in and I'll spend half an hour and then my wife will look at me going, what do you, like, you, we, this was our date night. I go, yeah, yeah, I go yeah. honey, okay. <laughs> and luckily she knows we call it device free time. She'll be like, honey, is this work or play? Because sometimes right. it'll start as work. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I just went to go send this reel to somebody. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, you're no, honey, suckle. we're in war. Yeah, you're <laughs> you in know? the suck hole. I get it. And I don't have a solution, but I did love the, I do, lo I love what you do with Off the Vine. It is, and you know, it's, it's so funny. I was, I was talking to, um, to Tasha, my wife, on the way here. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm excited. Boring interview. Yeah. This is going to be great. <laughs> and she was like, boring. And of course, she was like, she goes, Caitlin Bristow is a fucking mogul. <laughs> I love it. And I was like, you're damn right she is. Oh. I mean, you, your company sent us wine, which we love. Thank You've you. You've got all of the, you know, so much going on. But your podcast specifically, if I could break it down as a consumer, is a case study on you trying to navigate life uh -huh. and bringing on professionals and other people that have similar issues that expose that and talk about that publicly. I loved your conversation with a therapist about phones mm -hmm. and she told you, she was like, look, you're not going to solve your issues until you get rid of the phone. It's and, crazy. and I believe it, but I don't get rid of my phone. Oh, I believe I went off. I was like, I'm taking a break a week later. I was like, she back. <laughs> yeah. And you know, all the sheep are going to be like setting a timer. to. to oh, they wait. did. Yeah. Everyone was like, uh, and I'm like, well, how, who are you to say how much time I take off? I was ready to come back. Mm. Yeah. And I look at it as this, like the, while like the sheep almost come with the, um, the market that funds your entrepreneurial spirit. Totally. And it's so it, it becomes in, in part a necessary adversary but, it is. but it's just like how do you and again I think I, I said this earlier today I think to myself I was like you know what I just have to come to terms with this being a practice I have for the rest of my life mm -hmm. to know to avoid that mm -hmm. and to know like I know if there is a specific like full thread about me with my name in the title like let's avoid that but sometimes you'll just I mean when it shows up to your doorstep in your Instagram that can be harder too yeah I don't go I've never in my life read a Reddit article about myself I know how nasty those are and I refuse to put myself in the, like I will partake in my own verbal abuse on Instagram but I won't go to the Reddit because I'm like that's where the real hate is yeah. and I don't think I could handle it we had people um, I'm so blessed with this community because we, I set up a GoFundMe for Clayton for his legal battles yeah. that raised seven grand. And then the next day I got sucked into a court case and um, I'm still waiting to be served. She was supposed to serve me my court papers, but I think she messed them up. So I've just, I've been carrying around oh my. my selfie stick to record it when I finally get yeah. served. And someone set a GoFundMe up for me and they, and they raised money. A few people donated wow. a thousand dollars each. It was, it was insane. And that got so much hate from people they go what are you in a cult you join this private membership community and now you're donating and i'm like i don't i'm not asking for this right. but the scarcity mindset that exists yes. with a lot of people is a result of it's scarcity now yeah. i wanted to talk with you about your poorest moment as an adult i oh, want to boy. talk about where you, how you felt and and kind of compare it to today like because at my rock bottom? I, and, and when you say rock bottom, I wanted to use the, the rock as an example. His production company is called Seven Bucks Production or whatever because he had a $5 bill, a $1 bill, and change in his pocket. And he couldn't afford... Oh, you mean like actually financially? I want to talk about the, the, that time of your life when you were like, what? Before Bachelor, when you were like, what are we doing? Yeah. Where's this going? 
Okay, before we touch on that, I, I have worn the sweater like three days in a row now, so I'm embarrassed that I just did an Instagram thing and then I'm wearing it again. And I we'll just say smell. we recorded this yesterday. We recorded this yesterday. <laughs> um, and then also thank you for the podcast shout out because to me, that's my community. Mm. You know, like how you, you have this incredible community. To me, the podcast community is like, I don't even know them and their family to me. I just feel like they listen through their brain and it yeah. goes straight to the soul. Yes. And it's just, I wish I could meet every single one of them. I'm just, you know, they're, they're tuning in because they're not just scrolling and hating. They, like they have to like me because they're tuning in for a full hour to listen to what I have to say. You were in the friend group of what I'm imagining to be like a hundred thousand people. Yeah. I don't know your stats, but I'm just imagining. You know, I don't know them either. I don't, I don't do it. it I don't want to fuck with my head about numbers good i want smart. i just want people to i want to make money of course but i also i just want people to by the way i love this it. like almost halloween look you have going oh on. yeah spooky Very, oh, by the way speaking of spooky i got you something what um, there it is it's for your it's for your trip um, why did that just scare i was like uh, ah! i know i was thinking maybe i'll do a fake like a spider dropping down yeah. but i didn't but this? yeah, we'll get to the we'll get to the um, your lowest point in a second. Okay. But there <gasps> oh, is, I love there snacks. There are probiotic dog treats. Stop it! So don't it. eat those. And so yeah, you could eat Pumpkin the probiotic. Pumpkin marshmallow covered in chocolate. And then I, and then I took back one thing I was gonna get you because I it was like um it was like a uh, roll aids or something. And I was like that's kind of weird. Uh, roll aids. I always have roll aids when I fly. I love M and M's. But I love M and M's. Wow, same as Anyway, so. Wow, um, thank you. Of course, I um. I didn't get you anything. You're here. Your, your, your presence is all I need. I'm very excited <laughs> to drive you here. We're going to the airport. I don't know if we told people. Oh yeah, we're going to the airport. I'm flying home. Um. So. Okay. Lowest yeah, point. Lowest point. You're a, you're a you're a fucking mogul, as my wife said. Now, <laughs> I want to get to lowest point to mogul status. I lived. I. Okay, let's put it this way. I tried to apply for a credit card when I was 26 years old, and I got denied because I had no credit. At 26, I was like, if I had twenty dollars left over after like paying bills and rent and everything i was like <laughs> and this is when you're wait waiting tables yeah and i lo- i didn't care i didn't stress i always for some reason was like oh, i'll figure it out like that's just what my mentality was and i think it might be because i knew my dad was on standby if i really needed anything <laughs> so you need, well you knew you had a support system i i had the best support system like my dad was always so supportive because I really was chasing a dance career. So, um, so yeah, I, I never really had money and, uh, it didn't stress me out ever. I just always thought I'd figure it out. And the only time it stressed me out was when, so before I moved to Germany to be with a guy, um, he was a hockey player and he, I didn't want to live off of him even though I knew that's what all the girls were doing. And that's kind of what they have to do because I couldn't work in Germany. I, you know, don't speak the language. And so I went home to Edmonton, Alberta, and I worked at a roofing company. And then I, I waited on tables at night. Roofing company? Yeah, roofing company. Were you doing like administrative stuff? Like or were I, you on we're driving right now and I'm looking at people's roofs going, huh, <laughs> I could really use a new one. <laughs> You're a roof expert. Just, I'm just a roof expert. Wow. I don't know. I was born with it, I guess. Wow. How'd you get into that? God gave it to me. I signed for it. The world keeps on spinning. All oh, right. From roofing to the ballroom <laughs> dance floor. We've really made it from top to bottom. Well, the truth is, my one of my best friends owned this roofing company, and he was like, if you want to work for me for a few months before you go, I'll give you a job. Um, and then, so after that, I was like, okay, I saved up like a decent amount of money. Um, but I went through it got back to Vancouver from Germany, no money, no job, and he broke up with me. And I didn't have a home, I didn't have a job. He broke up with you after Germany? Yeah. And so he's pursuing his dream. Yeah. He's doing hockey, you gotta yeah. go to Europe to do hockey, like soccer and other sports. Yeah. And you're over there financially sort of tied to his dream at this point. And emotionally, I, I, I relied on him for my happiness, for my living situation, for a, a car, everything. Yeah, you know, I talked a lot about this with actual Blake Moyne's mom, Emily Moynes. Oh, bless. She, yeah, do you know her? Well, I, I know of her, and I know, um, I just love Blake. Yeah, she's so sweet, and she talked a lot about how, in her relationship she was in, she just didn't have any control of the bills. Yeah. And that's how it used to be. It used to be that, you know, it, when people look at, oh, times were different. No, people didn't have autonomy. They didn't have yeah. career choices. Mm-hmm. They didn't, I mean, we were just traveling um, back from the Maldives through Qatar, which is uh, one of the richest countries in oh, the you world. Were? Oh, you know, just, you know, casually oh. dabbling in the Middle East. <laughs> and Qatar was a country 
and again, someone's going to be from Qatar and correct me on this, mm-hmm. but they had they had polygamy, but it's gone down a lot because women are getting the chance to work now yep. and and have the credit cards and and, and you know the the freedom really. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, in that situation, you're tethered to somebody. You can't. Not only can you not work because of visa and all those other issues, but you're in a new place. Yeah. So all of your attention becomes on this person. Why didn't you have friends? Yeah. You know, I was nine hour time difference from family. So, so have you learned that, like, um, just the value of having friend groups throughout all of these oh. other times? And what, it, like, yes. what does that look like? What does a Caitlin Bristow friend group look like? You know what's so funny is I've had the same, like, five solid girlfriends, a few of them since I was, like, five, and a few of them since I moved to Vancouver at 19. Um, and are these the, girl, the ladies we see on your, like, pontoon boat photos when you post when you're back home? Yes, probably. Okay. I... I have a lot of friends and I, I'm very picky about them because you know that saying that you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with? Mm-hmm. Like I truly believe that. I look at my girlfriends from Vancouver and who I surrounded myself with over 10 years of living there and I'm like, no wonder I'm driven and I want to empower women and I like have a sense of humor. They all did. Like every single one of them has like their own business or they're, you know, doing something that they love to do. They have nonprofit organizations. They're all just like really good, solid people with senses of humor and they champion each other. And I think that's why I also find it so interesting to be trolled so hard by other women because I've never experienced that. Mm. Um, Until The Bachelorette. Yeah, like I, uh, you know. Probably more so. I got bullied once in like grade six. Oh, we say grade six in Canada, sixth grade. (laughs) Um, I got bullied like one time. Over what? Um, They said my butt was as big as a garbage can. Oh, that's a good thing. Well, yeah, I was like also like 30 pounds. Butts weren't in that back then. No, and I didn't even have one. So I don't, but that started a fight between, you know. A fist fight? No. Have you ever fought someone? (laughs) <laughs> well, the hockey, you know, a lot of... If you want to... Okay, have I ever fought someone? No. Have I been punched in the face by a girl? Yes. Really? Yeah, I didn't even know her. What hurt your soul more? That or just your DMs? DMs. Yeah. Because I was like... Well, I guess at that point I was like... I she didn't know me, but neither, these people don't know me either. But if that, if these trolls that were talking to me the way they are came out to me... Do you know what? I'm crazy. I have... We know. i have a photo album of trolls if they have a profile picture stop it and i like (laughs) sometimes before i go to an airport or like go somewhere i'll like look at these people's faces and if they ever come up to me and ask for a photo i'm gonna say you don't think i know who you are that is your facial recognition technology yeah well you know that's what i loved when brianna media who is a influencer hired a private investigator to find her trolls she didn't do it to harass them she just wanted to know deborah's a teacher Mm -hmm. um susan's a nurse yeah and do you know so many trolls that were psychologists and and near the definition of trolls is debatable but it's people that will go out of their way to send negative negativity i look at it as like a buffet imagine being at a buffet and you're like i'm gluten free fuck your mac and cheese (laughs) no you pass over it you fucking asshole (laughs) you pass over the mac and cheese you just don't take the mac and cheese yeah caitlin takes a photo of the mac and cheese and remembers that (laughs) so when so so you don't know why you got punched in the face no, it was some, I was probably 16 years old and I went to a bush party, which was like a field where a bonfire happened and people just go get drunk. Mm-hmm. And um, this girl decided that she didn't like me. I think it's because she had a crush on the guy I was with. Mm. Um, and by with, I mean like, I was 16, like we were like holding hands. I was a really, I, I know I was like this controversial bachelorette. It was like sex positive. You don't um, say, you don't say. But I was quite the prude when I was younger. Really? Um, yeah. Prude Caitlin. Uh, can you imagine? I mean, sure. I mean, everyone's got their moment of sort of like, 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 were you prude? Was it a religious thing or? No. I mean, because Canadians are more open overall than Americans when it comes to. I got there around 18. Okay. Yeah. 16, I was like holding hands and nervous about everything. Um, But I think this girl liked him. And so she told everybody that she was going to fight me. And I was like, I I don't want to (laughs) fight. Like, I'm like, I I can't. I don't even know how to fight. And um, everyone kept warning me that she was going to come to this party. And then she did. And uh, people formed a circle. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do the circle. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "It's this is like straight out of the movies." And um, <laughs> she she walked right up to me and she's and I had said, "This girl seems like a bitch" because she was hating for, on me for no reason. So she came up to me and she said, "Do you want to say that to my face?" And I said, "Well, I think you're kind of a bitch." 
mm-hmm. and then she just went boof, and then everybody jumped on her, and I was any blood? Saved. Or are you good? No, I don't even. Th- honestly, I don't even. I I remember falling backwards, and then coming back up and being like, yeah, I, I always thought that'd be worse. I think the idea of a fight is way worse in the anticipation of than than the actual fight. Yeah. And your body has a way with adrenaline to oh, just totally. like make you kind of chill out with it all. I wish I wasn't such a puss. I, w- I wish I would have just like fought back and had a story, but. Would you ever do like, and you're probably, you're probably above this, but would you ever do like a special forces where they put you through the, the, the ringer? I mean, if times get tough, sure. <laughs> if times get tough. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, no. Galen Bristow doing yeah, but then that, quality. But that also makes it look like Hannah Brown was not doing well, which she was. That was the most badass thing that she did. Oh, it's badass. But, you know, there's some strategy I can imagine. Like, do you have a team? Do you have, like, people that go over your projects and stuff? Like, how do you yeah. How do you know, do I want to take this versus do I want to avoid or pass? Well, a lot of things I go with gut reactions. And that goes for a lot of things in my life I've gone with gut reactions. Yeah, you told me that when I did your podcast about responding to dms it's just a vibe thing yeah like it's just i'm i'm a really in the moment kind of person that's actually what got me in a lot of trouble on the bachelorette was i'm just so in the moment with each person and i i wasn't thinking about you know somebody else's feelings in that moment because i was in the moment with this person why am i doing that why would i ruin this experience and i just do that sometimes it gets me in trouble what it was it what, how many times in your head did you say no to this before you said yes? This right now? Yeah. You must have been like, oh, I'd rather take an Uber. <laughs> like, no. Because I would. I mean, if you want a quiet time yeah. and sit in the back of an Uber versus, like, this is kind of still... I knew I would enjoy this, though. It wasn't... This isn't something that I was, like, dreading or that I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. It was more like, first of all, <laughs> I wanted to say no at one point because I was like, I don't want to talk about this breakup or... A, I got you. I, but I also want wanted to say no in certain times when I don't like being performative and fake. So when I was like going through a hard time, it would be like, everyone's like, why aren't you posting with him? And why is this mm. not? And it's because I don't want to be fake. And so I think that's a big part for me. I just, I really like to be an authentic person. Plus you were super sick when I did your podcast. Yes. And I was like, Caitlin's about to flake on me. And then I saw <laughs> I you and I was like, oh, she looks pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was not well. Um, that's just me. Yeah. My personality is like, no, they hate me. Uh, that's I, I start with that. That's it's not yeah. you. It's I start with everybody. If I don't get a response right away, or, oh, they must they must hate me. I'll go fuck myself. Yeah, that's I always do that. Well, I'll just go fuck myself. I literally say that about twice a day about situations that yeah. are just like, well, I guess I my mom didn't respond to me on a text. Well, I guess I'll go fuck myself. I'm the <laughs> shitty son that she didn't want. That's why she remarried. <laughs> Had another. Oh no! You know, I was like, yeah. Well, she got her two. Per- and I love my younger brothers, yeah. but you know, she obviously remarried to try to perfect the the gene code. She was like, all right, we got a podcaster on our hands. Let's <laughs> give this one more shot. She had like one egg left. Let's see if we can get. One and, then, egg left. and then my younger brother is going to art school, and I'm like, gotcha, bitch. Uh-huh. How's that? Sucker. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, but um, where the hell were we? I uh, don't know. But yeah, so intuition. So intuition. Oh, yeah, intuition. To- And is that what led you into Spade and Sparrow wine company? Yes. A lot of things like I, I got so many offers and that's not to toot my own horn. That's just because that was where the world went after my season of the bachelorette. It started being an influencer world. How can we monetize our equity? Yes. And all of that. And everyone was, of course, at the time, like I was one of the first ones to start having a following because of the time not because of me or anything just because of the timing you were in and that's early on you were probably the front of like hannah brown was a little bit after you and she yeah. was probably like the pinnacle of instagram. oh totally yeah so you were still I kind was of 2015 like, like instagram was just starting to become a thing that could be mm-hmm. that you could monetize on and so i was and, and by the way this is my these are my favorite trees in la that we're driving by so this is good oh, they're really cute oh, they look these like, amazing they look like um out of nintendo exactly Yes, these are non palm trees. They are they don't exist everywhere in LA. Oh. But this is beautiful. anyway. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I no, just, thank you for I wanted you to enjoy yeah. this one little sliver of I'm LA really, that I like. I'm really happy you did that. That was what kind of tree are they? No idea. I, I just I, they feel old. They feel like they feel like dinosaur. Yeah, kind they of got old, character. Old um, evergreens. They really do look like the shrubs out of like Mario. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of evergreens, that's what it's all about, right? Trying to like monetize your Instagram. Yes. Trying to keep it. Trying to ride that wave as long as possible. But without losing my authenticity for these brands that I'm like, well, I wouldn't use that. Yeah. I really, I turned down a lot of brand opportunities because I'm like, that does not align with me at all. Um, what's the biggest amount of, what, like, what, what's the biggest cash sum you had to turn down? Because it was like, look, we're not car insurance sponsors or, you know. What, what Honestly, I turned down, like, have you seen that show where people go to Mars? Yeah. 
they offered like $150,000. Wow. And I was like, that ain't for me. Yeah, that had um, Tom Schwartz. And, yeah. Um, was there any Bachelor folks in there? There might have been. I think Ashley I went on it. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I didn't um, catch that show, but I, I like the premise. But yeah, so you just were like, nah, that's not going to. I was like, I don't know if I want to, like, I don't know. I'm just, I've worked so hard on. Were, were you like, can I get my wine on every corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because at like, some point it's like, how do I get something out of this? Where yes. 100 grand can only get you so far. Right. And it, it was so long of filming. I would have been gone. I would have been a shitty podcast mm. host. I would have been a bad business owner. And it would be to just like be on TV and do this. Like. And I, it's just, that might sound so stupid to some people because that's so much money. Um, but I really do pride myself on aligning with things that I believe in. And I've worked so hard on Spade and Sparrows and on this podcast. And they're my two favorite things that I do. And I don't know. It's just, to me, I, I t I'm really intuitive. And I can listen to my body if I really try and know that doesn't feel right or that feels right. Like, I'm working on something right now where I'm like, this feels so right, and I've been waiting for this feeling for a very long time to take on another project. Um, where are some obvious examples where you didn't listen to your intuition? And, mm. and have you learned that that, like, sometimes you don't know what the gut feeling is until you didn't listen to That's it. That's true. And, and is that something you're kind of learning to pick up on? I mean, I feel like throughout life, we're going to continue to be presented with obstacles. Uh-huh. You know, the world yeah, is here Yeah, I'm not to, always going to be like, my intuition is bang on every time. Yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, because we talk intuition, and maybe another term is like red flag, or, you know, just, just the idea that something is being, you're, you're being told, like, this isn't it. But you have to be presented those opportunities in order to know what the right ones are. Yeah, like the, I tried to do a show called Nine to Wine on YouTube, and I feel like people were just telling me what I wanted to hear. But my gut told me not to do it. I did it anyways. Mm. And it just didn't do well. So, Spade and Sparrows obviously aligns with you. You love wine. Who doesn't? You're making... I love that you all, like, randomly make, like, a Spade and Sparrows spritzer. And <laughs> it's 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 cool. It's yeah. it's simple in the sense that it's it's a it's a product that your goal is to get this in stores. Mm -hmm. You got it in Target. We bought it in Walmart a couple yeah. years ago. I think during the pandemic. Yeah. So, what's that been like uh, going from... Was there a big financial risk or was it kind of like a company taking a little shot on you and now you're trying to just juice your numbers? No, so I I definitely didn't want to like put my name on somebody else's product. So it's fully mine. I invested all of my own money into it. Right. And uh, it obviously was risky, but I, I made it back, so I'm happy, but. Any idea? Are we talking, you know, Mars checks worth <laughs> or triple? I'm so weird about money. I'm like, I'm not telling you. You don't have to. Okay. Okay. But uh, enough, enough that you were, you know, coming from the world where you couldn't get a credit card. Yeah. Now you've got a sizable amount of risk. Yes. Okay. And I really believed in it because I'm like, look, if there's one thing I know, I worked in restaurants, training servers on wine knowledge. Like I know mm -hmm. wine. It's not that I just like it. I know it. I know about it. I've studied under sommeliers. I've traveled to taste it. Like I really love my wine. And so it felt like it was almost like, why have I, why didn't I do this earlier? How about a Caitlin Bristow wine advent calendar? Great idea. Different shot of wine every day. Because I got, some, I get those wine advent calendars. Oh, yeah. That is a thing. And every day they give you these little three, maybe less than a third of a, it's just like one glass every day, you know, during the during the Christmas season. Yeah. And you're like, all right, but again, that's a lot of options. You know? Yeah, I feel like I got to stick to just my. Yeah, don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, my gut says no. <laughs> exactly, no. <laughs> my gut says no, but I do like, that. that's a genius concept. Um, and it brings my next question about multi-goal syndrome. What do you what okay. What are your thoughts of multi-goal syndrome? Like ha just having too many. Just wanting to do a bunch of different things versus focusing hard on one thing. When I was doing hosting the show and then Dancing with the Stars tour while podcasting, I had my hair accessory line and Spade and Sparrows. I was like this is good. This, I'm like drowning. This means I'm like, you know, I'm this busy. And then I burnt out so quickly. And I was like, I need to just like, like I craved only focusing on two things. I was like, if there's two things I could focus on professionally, it would be Spade and Sparrows and my podcast. Now, personally, I'd like to focus on a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that I am, I'm here, I'm just focusing on my two businesses and I feel like a failure. I'm like, why is no one calling me and asking me to go on better shows than Mars? Like, why, why am I, I stuck doing a driving with Dave show? What, what is this? What what turn did I take to <laughs> well, get in you, this car? You know, 
I saw this amazing kind of like blurb online that was that successful people feel like they're failing 98% of the time. Mm. And I have existential crisis every week when I don't put enough time into my stand-up career yep. because that doesn't pay the way some other things do. Right. I love the other things, right? but it is it is a mistress versus like, who's getting my time? I know. And it's almost like having multiple families. And yeah. you just got to try to figure it out. I don't feel like out. as humans we're meant to do this many things. It's like, I think it's the problem. I, I feel like my mental health was really struggling when I was trying to juggle way too many things. Just, and for what? Like, just to look busy, to look like I've got it all going on? I don't know. Well, and then sometimes you just throw a lot of shit at the wall and whatever sticks, yeah. sticks. Um, I, uh, but with Spade and Sparrows, I mean, what's the ultimate goal? Like, expanding the line or, like, where do you go from here? Because it's in big stores. You've been... Well, I want it to go national. It's... Within Target or, like, everywhere? Everywhere. So Kroger's and you're just all the Costco, different... Costco, like, grocery stores. Yeah, I would like it to just be available where you can buy wine. Um, and we are on our way, but wine sales are down across the board, which what the hell's going on? Why are people You have a it? great priced wine. Yeah. It's delicious. It really is delicious. And it's low sugar, which that's what a lot of people are looking for in alcohol these days. Like people yeah. aren't drinking as much and they want lower sugar. And all my wines are low sugar and they're ama- like, I truly believe, that's the only wine I drank really. Yeah. Like I, tr- I genuinely love it. Um, I, 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 yeah, I mean, and it's it's simple in the sense that it's it's not like a, you're a bait and tackle shop. It's like you like wine, I got you wine. Yeah. And I think wine culture here, it, it's like you know people are getting into tequila. It's like if you're a celebrity, oh which you are, you have to get into something. But it has to be something like you said you really have passion for. You yeah. Know, like I think no offense to Blake Lively, but I think she came out with like an alcoholic seltzer and she doesn't drink alcohol and it's like That's it's, a little gri- it's a little grifty. Jennifer you know? Lopez came out with a spritz and her whole thing is like, well, like how do you look so good, J Lo? She's like, I don't drink. And then she comes out with a spritz and she's like, well, I actually do drink once. And I'm like, what? Yeah. That and doesn't it's make like, sense. Sell your spritz, but don't put your name on it because Post your Malone name has a rosé. Didn't do well. There you go. Because I don't think of post. I don't think of rosé when I think of post Malone. Yeah. I think of face tats. Now, did anyone come? You know, you, you obviously have trolls, but do they come for you like financially? Because that's when you know you're really. You know, sometimes. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> well, it's hard because <laughs> you own the business, so it's not like some, they're gonna pull the rug out from underneath you. But I only ask because that just seems to be like kind of where the world is, where people will come after you in whichever way they can. But it sounds like they're just trying to be mean to you. Yeah, I think they're just trying to be mean. I I really believe that I am I am I didn't realize how much of an acquired taste I am <laughs> uh, until I had you know a following. But people really don't um, align with <laughs> my decisions or my sense of humor, or they take things the wrong way. But like today, I was telling one of my girlfriends about something someone said to me, and I hated myself in this moment because I just was scrolling through so much love just to find the hate. And then I went, what the hell am I doing? So I started reading all the loving ones and I was like, okay. And it really changed my mindset. And I'm like, why am I, you know, same way we always do. And we're humans. I'm not a robot, but like I've, I'm literally scrolling past so much lovely, so many lovely humans saying nice things just to find the hate. And I'm like, now that's on me. Yeah. But I I love the people that go, just avoid it. Like they have no idea. They have no idea. And so, and some personality types might be able to but I think one of the ways that you connect with your audience is that you do care so much and Mm -hmm. in part of that part of that struggle is you care so much so it also connects you with the trolls Mm -hmm. Um, and you know no matter yeah no matter what you say they're gonna come for you all right I have two questions uh, I I ask most of my guests okay when did you know you were funny and when (laughs) did you feel hot (laughs) well start with the funny okay because you said you had funny friends but when did you know you were funny that's, I've never thought about this before because I was painfully shy as a child. I was, always wanted to make my family laugh and entertain my family so shy with and who? close friends, but like strangers or like at school, I wouldn't even walk to the vending machine because I thought people were looking at me. Like I would be like so insecure and shy and like so overly aware of like your perceived importance. I don't even know. Like I was scared they were going to judge what food I was going to get out of the. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. But I was like, I was so shy and like. Were you observant? Like, did you did you feel overly, like you know, because a lot of funny people are just observing what's around them, and then the funny maybe. comes from maybe like, saying out loud the funny thing. Maybe I feel like I really started having a solid sense of humor around. 
I want to say like 10. Wow. That's like, about that's about right. You like that's to... when I started watching TV and thinking like, wait, that was really funny. That made me belly laugh and then recycling mm. it and making other people laugh and then going, oh, I like this feeling. So that's some imitation of humor. That's what I love about, I love, uh, I do remember those times when you go, that part, that's like you, there, you stop taking things literally and you start feel, seeing the nuance in humor. And uh -huh. I think that's why a lot of humor uh, plays up to the highest level of intelligence because a lot of like British humor will be so dry. You're like, what's right. even going on here? And um, I can't wait for one day to have a kid where I'm ribbing them and they're understanding that <laughs> yeah. my face is serious, but in, but there's this twinkle happening. Yes. And that is part of the dance of growing up. And so 10, that, that would line up at about the time where you start to go, oh yeah, funny, funny's fun. Um, yeah. And it unites people in ways. It does, and I liked how it made me feel like laughing that hard or making other people laugh really like did something to my soul. Uh, and then I remember going to Billy Madison, and I don't know what year Billy Madison came out. I just rewatched this. Uh, 1996, I think. 96. So, I yeah, so I, that makes sense. I was 11. Perfect. And I remember being like, this guy's my hero. He's fighting um, uh, Bob Barker. Yes. He's, there's a guy with one hand. There's crazy... Yeah, and it all takes place on a golf, on a serious golf course. So it In has Vancouver. the perfect... I worked on that Oh, there you course. go. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, and and he's drunk chasing penguins. It's great. Um, I remember thinking that movie is so funny, and then I really got into Jim Carrey movies, mm. and I just, yeah, I really started. I loved humor. I loved it, and my dad and my mom were both quite funny. Actually, my sister is pretty funny too. We have the same sense of humor, all of us, all four of us. Your mom? My mom is a firecracker. Really? She thinks I'm hilarious. Are you the funniest? A hundred percent. Really? My sister would probably be like, no, I'm pretty funny. I'm the, yeah. But funny, that that's the nuance with humor is that usually you, the one-upping of each other makes things funnier. Like, it's almost like, um, you know, you, in this pressure, pressure cooker situation, you make the diamond. Yeah. And that's how people cut their teeth with humor is growing up. I'm, yeah. I'm the quietest in my family. I really? think in, in family situations, because my uncles are so loud. <laughs> and it wasn't until high school where I would throw these jokes out there that I think I was just saying a lot of it under my breath, so maybe it was a lack of confidence. Yeah. And I had a buddy that goes, dude, you're really funny, the way yeah. you kind of acknowledge these things. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't have known it from my loud-ass family. <laughs> like, That's fine. You know? I'm the loud-ass uncle, the drunk uncle at the parties. That's me. <laughs> there you go. Drunk uncle. <laughs> maybe that'll be the next I'm wine drunkle. label. Drunkle. Drunkle. There it is. <laughs> All right, so we got your humor down. Now let's talk about hot. When did you feel hot? I, uh, am I hot? I still don't know if I'm hot. You're hot. I, you feel hot. I used to feel like at 18 years old, I thought I was the hottest shit to walk this planet. Like I, and I had. What do you, I mean, like, so let's go, let's go to 18 year old uh, Taylor Bristow. We're talking early 2000s. No, I'm going to show you a photo. We're about the same age. I think you're born a month after me. And by the way, I'm not here to pat myself on the back, but I'm so good at this. I, I, you, we have four minutes left and I'm getting to the good parts. The, the planes are flying overhead. <laughs> well, you can do a lap. We're still early. Oh, what time do you need to. Well, three. No, we'll, we're gonna hit some traffic. There'll be traffic getting in. I, I, I will send you a photo. Please do. Because I, I had danced my whole life. I could not gain a pound for the life of me. At eighteen and nineteen, I was eating like egos all morning, so much butter and syrup, and then I would go to Starbucks for like a white mocha frappuccino, and then I would eat Wendy's for lunch, and mm. then I would eat McDonald's for dinner. Good. And then I was a cheerleader in the CFL in Canada, and there's a picture, <laughs> and it genuinely looks like I got my wisdom teeth taken out. Like, I had chipmunk cheeks. Like, naturally? Yeah. That's how you looked? I had, I gained weight. Oh, uh, okay. And I, my face blew up, like, all the weight went to my face, and there's this hilarious picture of me, like, with pom-poms, and honestly look like I had the mumps or something. I don't know how I've missed that photo. Uh, I think I'm pretty I... well spoken on Caitlin Bristow's uh, <laughs> oh, maybe uh, you bio. Have... I'm honestly, it's so funny too, because in the corner it says like Caitlin's favorite hobbies, and it said hip hop dancing, and then it said Caitlin's favorite car, a green Pontiac Solstice. That's a slice of history. Like what? That's very specific. That is. And so... you know, do you think you said that? But I thought that, I was or... so hot. Yeah. Hey, well, that's all it's about. It's, it's, that's why I asked the question. It's, it's when do you think you're hot? When do you start to feel like, you know, I've got it? So you think at 18, you think when you were a cheerleader for the CFL? Yeah, and then I thought I lost it around, um, like, 33. 
<laughs> so 18 to 30, they're just straight <laughs> dripping sex. Yeah, but I wasn't. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, fuck. And then the internet happened, and everyone started picking apart my looks, and then I started to, like, not see what I... I don't know. I was like, am I not seeing what other people are seeing? And then I'm like... And now people think I've had plastic surgery, and I haven't. I think it's an easy... I think when people are looking for an easy thing to hit you with, that's what they go to. But at least get it right. Like, I do a shit ton of Botox. Yeah. Love Botox. Yeah, that's not plastic surgery. That's not plastic. You know what I feel the hottest, though? Is when I'm just, like, in, like, no... Okay, spray tan, no makeup, sweats, hair in a pony, around, like, people that make me feel confident. Okay. That's when I feel hot. So not when you're glammed up. Maybe that, uh-uh, I that... feel like a fraud. Okay. All right. I mean, that makes sense. I think most people do. Like, I can feel good. I'm like, oh, I look good in this, but I feel like it's a fraud. Like, I'm like, well, this... Like, when I get full beat down glam and hair, I'm like, this ain't me. Have you ever been to the Magic Castle? No. Oh, uh, you gotta go. What's that? Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? What? Is it here? The Magic Castle only exists in Los Angeles. It's a secret castle with the best music- uh, magicians in the world. And you have to Why dress up. I love magic. All right, you got you to come. One of our friends, um, he's one of the best close-hand magicians. You literally, your mind gets, you hurt when you leave there. Uh, but it's, you need a code to get in and you walk through. And every night it's sold out, but it's, it's membership only. But when you know the magicians, you get in. But you have to dress up. You have to be in a suit and tie. Women have oh, to be in a f- informal. And you see everyone and everyone's kind of like you know most people you can tell they don't normally dress this way but everyone's playing this part yeah and that's what i think of when when you think of like the glam and the red carpets and those types of things it's like we're all just playing this part yeah it's and like that's a costume not, yeah and that's not exactly how you feel sexy on the inside but yeah. it just goes to show that what you look like to somebody on the red carpet where that might be your physical best with all of the right. doodads it doesn't always align with how you feel on the inside. So it's interesting that spray tan, ponytail, and sweatpants <laughs> <Spray tan. laughs> is where you're at. Wait, now that you said magic, want to, want to see a magic trick? Please. How great is this? I got a Caitlin Bristow magic trick. Never done this before. Oh my gosh, you got cards? And you've never heard of the Magic Castle? No. All right. Okay. This is a breaking, official first magic trick in the drive with Dave. I don't know, but you got to keep your hands on 10 and 2. Okay, I can do that. Cars in self-drive mode. Okay. okay. What? Well, pick a card. Any card. Okay. Got it. Okay. Obviously, don't should let I, me should see I show it. the audience. Yeah, show the audience. Okay, there it is. Okay. Okay. Now pick a place to put it back in. Okay. Okay. Now I obviously that's it. Okay. Now I'm gonna just shuffle it. Okay. Is this your card? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> can, you <do> it? <laughs> can you do it again? Well, you have footage. Is that his is card? That, is that my card? I think so. No, you're lying. I di- I've never done a magic trick in my life. I just <laughs> I just literally I picked say, any I, card. I literally didn't remember that. Card. I did this once in my life, and my girlfriend was like, yeah, how'd you do that? I was like, shut up. She's like, yeah, that was my card. It was why random have, fluke. Why do you have cards on you? So I what went to... What nerd shit are you doing? <laughs> First of all, I... Spade and Sparrow's comes because I love a deck of cards. Okay. Um, and the spade is the strongest suit in the deck. Oh, um, there you go. All right. And, but I was at, um, my girlfriend has a press on nail company and she did a collab with Katie Maloney from Vanderpump. So I went to their collab last night. They did decks of cards and I'm wanting to do one for Spade and Sparrow. So I got the information of the guy who did this. Amazing. Look at that. And you got a fake magic trick out and of I it. And I got a fake magic trick out of it. <laughs> that was, that was, I was literally like too busy you, about like I like fat, focusing. I was like, I don't even know what she said. I can't wait to go back and see if that was the I card. I think it was a ten, but it could have been. Was I mean, it ten of diamonds? Because I it could have been <gasps> diamonds or hearts. Wait, ten of diamonds? I, if it's that, I'm gonna shit my pants because that card shows up for me all the time. That's how I get nervous when I go to the Magic Castle when when they ask you to pick cards because I'm like, I'm never gonna remember the card. I have I have my own issues. I don't know. Short term memory. Mine's. I don't know if I'm if it's actually bad or if I just. By the, so why is this Aero Mexico? I don't know, but I'm not checking a bag, so You're you not, can. Yeah, but this is, three's a long one. You're three, right? Yeah. All right, let's just do this. But Delta. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, anyway, it was a pleasure. That was so Let fun. Me help you I'm out. like sad that it's over. Well, oh well. Th- thanks for doing it. I appreciate was it. Was I okay? You were fantastic. You've been so supportive of my community. You're putting uh, food on my family's table by 
talking to someone like I mean I'm not kidding like the, the, like nice. you, like people like you and, and Katie Thurston and the, the leads that have done our show have legitimized it and yeah. I thank you so much for that well you're a good person oh thank you yeah and I feel like another intuition thing for me is like I can I can sniff them out in a second I can tell as soon as somebody walks up to me I'm like nope or it's energy thing like I can feel it I'm not as needy as I used to be I mean I'm still right. needy but I'm not like but you're very you're you're a vulnerable person you're honest and you have a good heart oh thank you yeah all right let's get your bags okay I made you say a nice compliment before I got your bags out <laughs> <laughs>